Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. One crime often breeds another, frequently a far deadlier offense. A simple burglary may end in murder, as in the case you're about to hear. That the guy? Yes, that's the dear, dear doctor. Psychiatrist, huh? Looks more like a jockey. Let's go. All right, where are they? Right here on my desk. But he made me give him the key to the drawer. I'll give it open. Why'd he fire you anyway? I had the recorder hidden under the patient's couch. He happened to hear it this morning. Boom, that was it. How'd you keep him from yelling for the cops? I put on an act, bawled my eyes out, swore I'd just put it there for the first time. Can't you get it open? I got it. Dr. Jameson. Well, lucky I forgot something and came back. More tapes. I can see I was wrong when I didn't call the police this morning. I'll rectify that mistake right now. Give me that phone. Bold, you knocked him through the window. Grab up those tapes and let's get out of here. goes the body, Chief. Nine stories. That's a long way to fall, Harrington. <laughs> sure is. Has the family been notified? Yeah, Pat, we took care of it. Wife and three kids. Have you noticed his desk drawer? Hmm. Yeah, pride open. Oh, I found this on the floor beneath it. Yeah. Label from a can of recording tape. I wouldn't want to call it suicide, would you? Oh, not with this setup. Anyone else around? Hmm. The janitor. He couldn't come up with a thing. Gave me the name of the office nurse, Pauline Colton. But he didn't know her address. Well, why don't you see if there's an address book on the doctor's desk? Yeah, that's a good idea. The lab boys get any prints off this drawer? Yeah, I picked up something. Oh, here. Yeah. Here's the doctor's book. Now, well, let's see. Uh, Colton. Ah, here it is. Pauline Colton. 1436 Carrington Street, Apartment 12. Evergreen, 34221. Shall I call her? Uh, no, why not ride out and see her? Let's go. Who you call it? 
Mrs. Charles Francis Palmer. Now, listen, chick, you got some real juicy stuff on these tapes, but I'm going to argue with you about something. Your idea of what you're going to do with it just, uh, just don't make sense. What do I have to do, draw pictures? Mrs. Charles Francis Palmer's going to give me $500 for the recording of what her husband said during his psychoanalysis. I told you that. Okay, okay. She figures it'll help her get a divorce from the guy, but this thing's worth a lot more than 500 bucks. We got to make it pay off, chick. We got to make it pay off big. How? We ain't going to let Mrs. Charles Francis Palmer hear this tape. We're going to let her husband listen to it. Or another recording of it. I won't do it, Bob. Blackmail's too risky. What are you talking about? We knocked the dock out the window, didn't we? That's homicide. Don't say that, Bob. It was an accident. Try to tell the cops it was an accident. Well, they don't know we had anything to do with it. I don't care. We're going to get a lot more than 500 bucks out of this, and we're going to do it my way. No, Bo, this is my deal. We're doing it my way. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I'm going to burn these other tapes. Hey, give me those. Let go of me, Bo. I'll let go of you. You lousy gorilla. Well, that'll teach you not to argue with me, chick. I'm a guy that likes his own way. Where are you going with those? I'm taking them with me. When you get some sense in your head, call me. You know the number. Fourteen thirty-six. Hey, here it is, Chief. Oh. Apartment twelve. Must be on the first floor. Yes. Mm, locked. Looks like we'll have to press the buzzer. I'll get it. Hope she's home. Oh, you never know. Who is it? Uh, we're police officers, Miss Colton. We have to talk to you. There we are. Miss Colton? Yes, I'm Miss Colton, but I don't understand this. You work for Dr. Leland Jameson? Yes. And Dr. Jameson was killed in his office this evening. We were pretty sure he was pushed through the window. We thought you might be able to help us on a few things. Pushed through a window? Oh, that's right. We were pretty sure it was murder. Well, but we, we'd better not talk out here. Will you come in? Well, thank you. Well, incidentally, I'm Paul Garrett, district attorney. This is Mr. Harrington, my assistant. Gosh, I... I don't know what to say. Dr. Jameson dead. I... I'm numb. Are you hurt, Miss Colton? You've got blood on your face. That's a bad bruise. Oh, oh no, no. I... It's really nothing. I... I fell against a chair just now. Oh, in here? Yes, as I was running for the buzzer. No, I'm very sorry. Well, don't worry about it. I'll be all right. Uh, Miss Colton, do you mind if we look through your apartment? Why would you want to do that? Well, I must tell you, we can't do this without your permission. That is, not without a warrant. And you don't have a warrant? Not at the moment. You don't need one. I don't know what you expect to find, but go ahead and look. Harrington? Okay, Chief. I just don't get this. You were Dr. Jameson's nurse, weren't you, Miss Colton? Well, that's right. Nurse and receptionist. Well, how long have you worked for him? Uh, let's see. About four months. Dr. Jameson was a psychiatrist. Yes. I imagine he did quite a lot of psychoanalysis. Oh, yes. He was in private practice. Uh, was it his custom to use a tape recorder doing these sessions with his patients? Oh, no. But he did use a tape recorder. Well, yes, but only for dictating letters and notes that he wanted typed up. These letters and notes that Dr. Jameson dictated on the recorder, was it your job to type them up? Yes, it was. And where did you keep the tapes? In my desk. Locked up? Yes. Did you keep the key to the drawer? I usually left it on the desk in case Dr. Jameson wanted to refer to anything. Well, there's nothing here, Chief. Okay, Harrington. Miss Colton, I appreciate your cooperation. Well, that's perfectly all right. I've got nothing to hide. Well, we might want to talk to you again. Anytime. I, uh, I tried not to disturb anything, miss. Well, that's all right. Good night, Miss Colton. 
Good night. Real nice and ladylike, Chief. And she acted as if she wanted to help us. But there's, there's one thing that bothers me. She said she cut her face by falling against a chair. And the only chairs she had in the room were all overstuffed. Right. So she was telling a lie. Why? Well, we'll put a tail on her. And tomorrow morning, I'd like you to call on several other psychiatrists in that building. Find out if they use tape recorders and psychoanalysis. I'll get on it first thing. Oh, it's you. Well, I haven't had dinner yet. I thought you might like to take me out to eat. I thought we weren't getting along. We weren't until the district attorney came to see me a little while ago. D.A., huh? Did he get anything out of you? Not a thing. But he had a man with him who searched the place. I'd have had a bad time if they'd have found those tapes. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you would. Looks like I saved you from something, don't it, Chick? You saved me from plenty, Bolt. Hmm. From now on, I'm with you. I think you're going to be good luck for me. Well, that's the way to talk. How about dinner? Sure. Sure, we'll go any way you say. First, I want to make a phone call. Huh? Who are you going to call, Bo? The well-known president of our Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Charles Francis Palmer. I'm going to set up a date with him for tomorrow. Hi, Miss Miller. Chief gone to lunch yet? Oh, no. He's still in his office, Harrington. Oh, good. Well, I talked to three psychiatrists, Chief. What do they have to say? They don't use recorders for psychoanalysis. Patients wouldn't like it. So the girl told the truth about that. All right. She moved out of her apartment last evening and left no forwarding address. Hey, that makes it tougher. Did anything come out of those fingerprints? Yeah, nothing. They were all blurred up. Hmm. Which means we don't have a single lead on this case. We've got to find one, Harrington. Dr. Jameson had some of the most prominent people in town as patients. I've got a hunch the thing is going to develop into an extortion setup. Unless we can stop it, this town is going to have its own reign of terror. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the blackmail killer, here is an important message I'd like you to hear. And now back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A psychiatrist had been murdered in his office, knocked through a window to the street nine floors below. Tapes from a recording machine had been taken from the office, and we felt sure they were going to be used for blackmail. And the crooks proved us right in a hurry. They went to work without losing a bit of time. Having accomplished what I had to do, and started toward my next appointment, this, of course, made it necessary to take extra precaution. <laughs> well, Mr. Palmer... I never agreed to let anything like this be recorded. How did you get this tape? What difference does it make? We got it, and we got copies of it. I suppose you expect me to pay you something to keep this quiet. You're lucky, Mr. Palmer. Your wife wants that tape. She wants to use it to get a divorce. This is fiendish. With that for evidence, she'd make a real monkey out of you in court. When her lawyers got through, you wouldn't have enough left to pay the tax on a movie ticket. <laughs> Dirty blackmailer! Okay, mister, you're asking for it? Go! Oh! Now, you better stay down there, Palmer, or you'll really get hurt. You can't do this to me. You can't do this to me. Oh, oh. take it easy. You'll kill him. Oh. I'm just knocking some sense into him. That's all. Oh. Just 
district attorney's office. Harrington, Miss Miller. Chief there? Oh, yes, he is. Just a minute. Hello, Harrington. Chief, I'm down at Central Station in Captain Mars' office. They just got a report here I thought you should know about. Charles Francis Palmer was beaten up at his home this morning. Hey, wasn't his name on that list of Dr. Jameson's patients? Oh, that's right. Who turned in the report? Uh, Palmer's sister. She's indignant and wants something done about it. But Palmer refuses to cooperate. Won't sign a complaint or make a statement. Maybe we'd better have a talk with him. Do you have his address? Uh-huh. 114 Park Circle. Oh, meet me out there. I'll leave right away. Okay, Chief. There's a spot. Right in front of the bank, too. Well, that's a loading zone, Bold. Who cares? Suppose a cop comes along. So we get a ticket. Well, shut up. Here comes Palmer. I've been waiting for you. You got the dough? I'll have to talk to you about that. What's there to talk about? All I want's the dough. I've got 5000 here. The deal is ten. I can't get that much. Go back there and get the rest of it. I tell you, I can't. I'm not as wealthy as you think. Oh, look, Palmer. Wait a I... second, Bolt. Give me the five thousand, Mister Palmer. That'll be all right. Oh, thanks. Here, you're dealing with me, Palmer. I don't care what she says. Go on, Mister Palmer. I'll talk to him. Uh, yes. All right. What are you trying to do? Be the mastermind again? You were pushing him too far, Bolt. We got 5,000 out of Palmer. Let's start working on the other people on our list. Hmm? Hello, Garrett. My sister said you wanted to see me. Oh, thanks for coming down. I hope you're not here just because of this accident of mine. Your sister insists that you were beaten up. She says she heard part of it and saw a man leaving the house. I don't care what she said. I hope you'll forgive me, but I have other things to take care of. All right, Palmer. It means we'll have to find some other way to handle the situation, but one way or another, we'll handle it. I'm sure you will. Good day, Garrett. That's a frightened man, Chief. Nothing freezes people up like blackmail. Yes, you're right. Well, let's get back to the office. Where are we going now, Bold? I'm looking for a phone booth so I can make a call. They can't trace you when you make a call that way. If you're going to be that careful, why don't you play it smart all the way? What do you mean? Going to Palmer's house yesterday. We could have walked right into a trap. Yeah, yeah, I thought of that. But how else are you going to do it? you got to let him hear the tape. Why not mail him a piece of the tape? Hey. <laughs> Kid, you're a real brain. And we meet him somewhere. That's it. Be a lot safer. Sure, sure would. And that's the way we'll do it from now on. Is the district attorney in, please? Yes, he is. Who shall I say is calling? I'm Miss Foy. Oh, yes. Just a moment. Yes, Miss Miller? Miss Foy's here to see you, Mr. Garrett. Oh, I'll have her come right in. Yes, sir. Would you go in, Miss Foy? Thank you. Mr. Garrett? Well, won't you sit down, Miss Foy? Thank you. I... I came in as you suggested, Mr. Garrett. Trouble? Yes, I... A man called me on the phone last night. He, he told me he was mailing me a piece of tape recording. I got it this morning. I'm frightened, Mr. Garrett. I... <laughs> Miss Foy, if it makes you feel better to have a good cry, you go right ahead. But if you're willing to help us on this case, I don't think you have anything to worry about. You... 
you really think so? What did the man tell you to do? Well, I, I'm supposed to meet him this evening at the entrance to Carroll Park. What kind of an arrangement did he make for recognizing you? I'm to carry a folded newspaper in one hand, a dog's leash in the other. Miss Foy, I want you to go home and forget all about this. Well, you... You mean you're going to take care of the meeting? That's right. You can leave the rest of this to us. I... I can't tell you how much I appreciate your help and, and your understanding. I want to thank you for coming in. That took courage. I was scared, Steve. But I, I'm glad I did. Goodbye, Mr. Garrett. Goodbye, Miss Boy. How would you like a job, Miss Miller? With dictation? Something more to your liking. How would you like to play decoy for us? With the blackmailers? I'd love it. Yeah, I thought so. Well, where's Harrington? Mm, he said he'd be at the doctor's for the next hour. Call him and tell him to check in here as soon as he's through. Okay. All right, Chick, pocket. Want me to stay in the car? That's right. Keep the engine running. Why, is she there yet? Oh, I can't tell with those bushes in the way. Good luck, Bolt. It's a cinch. Miss Foy? Yes, I'm Miss Foy. I guess you know why I'm here. Yes. How much do you want? 3000 Cash. Meet me here with her tomorrow night, same time. All right. And uh, don't bring anyone with you, understand? I understand perfectly. Okay. I'll be seeing you. How'd it go? It was a man, Mr. Garrett. He wants me to be here tomorrow night with $3,000. Now, that's what we want. You'll have the 3000 all right, and marked money. The moment he accepts it, we'll grab him. Just keep walking, Miss Foy. I've got the money for you. Okay, Here. okay, but keep heading for that car. Take a look, Chick. That's not Miss Foy. Get in the car, Where are you. Get going, Chick, fast. We're too late. That guy slugged her. One tail light, and they're heading through the park. Let's get back to the car. Anyone behind us, Bolt? Not right now. Well, I'm going to slow down, then. No use getting picked up for speeding. How do you know this babe ain't the Foy dame? Foy came into the office, didn't she? I saw Foy. How do you like that? We've got to do something about her, Bolt. She can identify us, testify against us. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. All right, what? Well, there's a ravine in the park. I know. It's right ahead of us. Pull over and stop, then. Douse your lights. <laughs> Keep it running. Come on, you. We've got to come up with them, Harrington, and fast. I'm wide open. Lucky it's late and there's no traffic. Car parked up ahead. Kill the lights and get in behind. Hey, yeah. Come on. Nurse, I'll get her. All right, all right, this will do it. You'll never get away with it. Oh, I think I will. Not with me! Hey. No! No, no, you don't! Come here! Now, that's enough of that. Hey, what are you... You're all through, mister. Who are you? Watch it, Chief, he's got a knife. I'll take care of that. 
Not enough, mister? Yeah. Yeah, just, just let me alone. On your feet. All right. All right, head for the car. You all right, Miss Miller? I'm fine. I'm sorry I didn't get here sooner. Oh, you got here just right. Hey, this looks like all home week. I've got the other one, Chief. Good. Now we can take them both downtown where they can dictate their memoirs to a police stenographer. Get in the car, both of you. Uh, I want a lawyer. You'll get one. But don't expect too much from him. With you, he'll actually be wasting his time. This is David Bryan again. I hope you've enjoyed this case from the file of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here's the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. I'm sure you read about this one in your newspapers. The people we call Bolt and Pauline were tried and convicted on counts of burglary, extortion, assault with intent to kill, and with murder in the first degree. Both are now serving long sentences for their crimes. And now this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. (laughs) 